what's up guys this is brian at whisper status 74 the video today is going to be about 8k as we're moving into 2020 and we'll be seeing major manufacturers release their new models you're going to see an influx or the majority of them releasing an 8k model and we had this conversation this time last year about 8k and hdmi 2.1 which neither one was necessary at the time and i will e or reiterate what i struggled with with 8k and HDMI 2.1. We'll do HDMI 2.1 in a separate video, um, as I think it's also still very interesting as it's become something that many of you think is absolutely necessary. And some really amazing displays aren't being purchased because they don't include HDMI 2.1. Um, ratings just released their 8K LG Nano Cell review, which we'll check out and do a video of that. And we'll do a, um, a deep dive into their article which we do on the channel at times so we basically all go over it together and it kind of reiterates for me why 8k was something that i wasn't looking forward to now before i start the video there are many people in the community that have the samsung q900r they have it they enjoy it so let's please be kind in the comments and try to keep toxicity to a minimum as that's how this community operates they have their displays they're happy with them they love them for many reasons one of them does high-end imax documentaries and actually utilizes the 8k functionality of the display now going back to what we said before for the longest time there wasn't even 4k content when i started the channel i didn't recommend 4k displays yet unless you were somebody who gamed who had a gpu that could actually take advantage of it the xbox one the ps4 were barely 1080p at the time um, there were no 4K Blu-rays yet. The streaming was barely there. So unless you had a PC that could actually run 4K, there was really no need for it. And now that we've got so much 4K content in terms of just Dolby Vision, HDR, HDR10+, the streaming, all networks are in on it other than cable TV at this time. Well, they're starting to get some of their stuff there. It's really been more about enjoying 2K upscales. And that's been the challenge with ushering in 8K. This year already has amazing transfers, the Joker, Gemini Man, and Dr. Sleep, which I grabbed today. They're filmed in 4K and 5K. And you're seeing them down, you know, not up converted 2Ks. They're actually down sampled to 4K which makes for an amazing image and something that many of us wanted for the longest time. To have 8K come in last year, many of us knew that it was marketing. What I liked about what 8K did last year, though, is they offered Samsung as the Q900R was their flagship. Then just below that, they had the Q90R, which was their 4K flagship. The issue is they're not really doing that next year. Most of their top models will be 8K. Actually, most of the top models of any of them will be 8K. But you will have 4K iterations of those, those models. Samsung isn't really doing that next year. They're going to have 4K models that aren't going to be up to the quality of the Q90, which is a shame because for me, there really isn't any need to jump into 8K. I'm not a content creator in that regard. I won't be, I won't be using it as a photographer or as a filmmaker but for those of you that use 8k content via photography or content creation for pro productivity it is necessary but for the majority of us it is more marketing than anything and i think that's what many of us are struggling with now that we have again great 4k discs the challenge is relying on the 8k displays to then up convert 4k which we already know by doing the Vizio conversation yesterday, upscaling is very important to many of you. That is upscaling 720p and 1080i. That's not upscaling of 4K. So that's where this is going to get a little bit dicey. As you go over to ratings.com, check out their website, read that article on the new nano cell. They do talk about 4K upscaling quite a bit, which is a little disconcerting because you want to rely on your upconversion to make things cleaner and make it a true representation of what came before, not um, alter it in any which way that makes it look worse. So you're gonna be relying on upscaling to then take some excellent 4K discs and upscale them to 8K. 
Now, to those of you in the com com or community that actually have the AK displays, you're very, very happy with them. And I don't want no one to take that from you. And I'm not looking to change your thought process on it. The issue I had with AK displays was they were being released without solving the issues of 4K displays, namely blooming, namely um, the local dimming zones were going down. The contrast ratios were going down. You'll see that with the LG NanoCell 8K review as well. I wanted that stuff to get to a point um, to where it was maxed out. I wanted to see the zone counts in full array go up. I wanted to see the peak brightness get closer to what they've been telling us Dolby Vision and HDR really needed to show you that 4,000 nit threshold. Um, having the Quantum XP series is what really intrigued me because it really kind of followed the roadmap of the Z9D and the Q9FN in terms of more zones and higher peak brightness. So they're getting away from that, I think, due to manufacturing. The fact that it doesn't make much sense to make these displays th more thick, full array, tons of zones. I think it is an issue for them. And I think they're looking to get things thinner. But 8K sounds a lot better to the average consumer than 12-bit. Now here you are in Best Buy looking at the Samsung Q900R at 75 inches. It's in a bright room. It looks amazing. This is just outside of the Magnolia section. Now, if it's 8K content, native 8K content, you can get right up to it. Now, this is talking about 12-bit and 8K. 12-bit is what many of us thought was going to be next, but 8K just sounds better. And here we are very close to it with a beehive honeycomb. As we transition into Magnolia, the Q90 is on top, the Q900 is on the bottom left compared to the LG C9 at 55 inches and 65 inches. You can see picture quality wise they all pretty much hang really well together. It would look different if the Q900R was also 75 inches but they do look very close. Now back to the discussion of 8K and 12-bit. Now, to the average consumer, we walk into those stores and you listen to them. I've spent enough time, obviously, in Best Buy talking to the associates, the staff, and just kind of hanging out around people when they're shopping. I've done that for many years now. And what intrigues the average consumer are these monikers, these 8K, 4K, those bold print. I remember when 1080i was out, there was 1080p, but it wasn't really 1080p. It was called 1080p True HD. And trust me, when 12-bit panels do come out, that will be labeled as 12-bit true Dolby Vision or true HDR. The average consumer needs to know that. When I've seen people walk in looking at the Q900R, they're looking to pay the same price for a 65-inch Q900R, which is the same price as a 75-inch Q90R. Not because they have any knowledge of its usage or its ability, but primarily because they see 8K. That is basically what is going on, and that is what it's being used for. It's not something, any kind of marketing in any kind of product in retail is always going to focus on whatever the customer looks for at the time. However, spending time at Value Electronics, um, shout out to Robert and Wendy, being around a Z9G, an LG Z9, and a Q900R, all 80 plus inches, and seeing them calibrated using full 8K content, it is absolutely mind-blowing. You can actually see the difference between 8K and 4K, especially since they're 80 plus inches, you're right up to the screen, they look amazing. The challenge is, and it's always been this way since HD was actually introduced, is how often will you have that content? The problem, guys, is it's going to come whether we want it or not, and we're going to be forced to make a choice at some point. You're seeing Sony, you're seeing, obviously, Samsung, they're ushering towards that. Simply, and you're seeing that with HDMI 2.1. HDMI 2.1 was not considered a big deal at the beginning of last year. And you've seen with something like the Sony A9G, which is considered one of the most popular displays this year, some people aren't buying it because it doesn't have HDMI 2.1. When the C9 has HDMI 2.1, it's just an extra feature. It's just an extra 
Also, marketing. Some people aren't even going to utilize that HDMI 2.1. They don't even have a PC, and they're picking one display over the other over marketing. And that's unfortunate. And the Sony A9G is not going anywhere. It's actually a master series for next year. And Sony's always been very good about not following that trend. But they are going in 8K. The Z9G is 8K. And it's here, guys, whether we like it or not. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Is it something that you care about? Is it something that you actually covet? Don't be shy. This is a non-toxic community. I do watch the comments. I do react to them all. I will not let you get assassinated in the comments. I want to know your real thoughts on it. Are you excited about it? 8K gaming is very, very far away. Even for PC gamers, unless you can really get a very old title and you're doing dual GTX 1080 or 28 RTX 2080 Ti's, which is a ridiculous amount of money and can't even be done yet through HDMI 2.1 because the graphic cards are not capable of it yet. HK or 8K gaming is also not around the corner. These new consoles, as powerful as you think they're going to be, I'll do this in my HDMI 2.1 video, the real target is going to be 4K60. Trust me, at least for the first few years. So maybe by those that period of time, you'll be ready to buy an 8K display. But initially, it's going to be more, you know, it's going to be more 4K60, which your display does right now. Doesn't matter if it's a TCL, doesn't matter if it's a Vizio, a Sony, if it's the lower end Sony's or Samsung's, just about every one of those displays is 4K60. Even if they're not, even if they're not 1080p 120, they're still 4K60. They'll be able to do games at 4K60, 8K gaming as amazing as it will be, is still very, very far away. If you have an 8K display and you love it, then I think you should love it. But I really want to know the thoughts on you guys. Honestly, are you excited? I'll always be excited for new tech. I would love to see 8K content. Um, but again, I'm not a content creator that actually utilizes 8K. I'm not a photographer. I'm not a filmmaker. But for those of you that are, it does have a specific function that fits your needs. For the rest of us, I do still truly think it's too soon. Showing you these discs, and you know, I'll be doing reviews on all of them later than everybody else, but seeing this quality, 4K has actually finally arrived. It's finally here, yet it's being pushed away in favor of 8K, and again, we'll be relying on upscaling to do the work. All right, guys, this is Brian at Whisper Status 74. Let me know what you think in the comments about 8K. It's here whether you like it or not. Is it something you guys are looking for? You might like it. If you like it, please tell me you like it. If you love it, please tell me you love it. If you, whatever you feel, get in those comments. I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.